Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. And this week's show, we have got Janet online, who's going to be talking about the Carol Marx History Project that we undertook this year during COVID 2021, and where we looked at the Carol legacy of Croom and the Marx origins from County Waterford, and particularly the city of Waterford. So we've two very good names there to look at and what we did and how we researched during the summer. So really, really important to, to see how we did that. Now, Janet, you're really welcome on the show today. Thanks, Lorna. Good to be here. And Janet, tell us a little bit about the, the, the Marks, the interest you had in the Marks family and why you wanted to research them. Well, I suppose it's just, it's a very unique name, I suppose, in one sense, um, you know, Lorna. And I didn't know another Marx. I have, uh, my mother's maiden name is Marx and I hadn't um, ever met another Marx, you know, besides my mom and my aunts. And my cousin in the UK actually um, was researching the family for a couple of years. And she was just, um, she was at a stalemate really. She wasn't getting too far with it. She had a few bits and pieces like birth certs of our grandparents, things like that. But she was, uh, my granddad was in the army. So she was kind of at a stalemate. And that's where I suppose where you come in there and started helping us out with that, you know. And it was just, I suppose the interest was the name itself and where it had come from, Marx and Carls, and and had the Carls always been in Croom or had they just come in at a certain time or, you know, because Carl is quite a a, a common name. So um, absolutely, I it was just a general yeah. interest in that, you know, and, and, how we, and we did find that with the Marx, the Marx origins could come from Cornwall or they could be mm -hmm. Norman French in origin and so on. So what we had there was very much a, a kind of a good, a good link to be able to do this at the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, I knew we'd probably get a bit more on Carol's than we would on Max. That's what I felt would happen. But as it turned out, we got quite a lot of information on we got both some, families. We did. And we saw where the Marx had come in to Yall in the 17th century and definitely probably were part of uh, Richard Boyle's men who really laid claim to Yall in the 16th and 17th century. So we see the influx of a surname that then takes grip in Ireland and their occupations were very interesting. They had deviated from farming in the 1820s and moved into Waterford City. Some of them were transplanted to Tasmania. Some of them were very much caught up in the building of Waterford as, you know, the life, the life of living in Waterford City with all its trades of carpet making and specialised individual crafts and so on. So that was one of the things that that came about it. And then, of course, we found some wonderful findings. And can you talk us through some of our findings that we found? Um, we did. Well, with the marks in particular, I suppose we found um, uh, a set of triplets, which was very interesting. Um, as you know yourself, you can you'll probably refresh me there on dates better than I will. Um, yeah. Which was quite unusual for the time to find birth certs for a set of triplets and to even hear of triplets, you know. Who didn't yeah. survive, by the way. So they, the woman had bothered to register them and they had died, you know. So we had, we had, uh, birth registrations and death registrations within the few days and they were poor people so it it really did you know it was very poignant to find that in 1911 you yes. know or, yeah and, and they so were they, they were my grandfather's um 1911 it was yes actually yes. The, i just see the 4th of october and they died on the 7th of october three days later there was um two boys and a girl and they were siblings of my grandfather and yes. my mother um she didn't even know they had, had existed, existed. Yeah. so i don't know like how much of that my grandfather would have known about them even because i think 
uh, even though he he came before them, he would have been was four, four or five. He was nineteen oh eight. Nineteen oh eight. He was only three, really. Yeah. So he might have had no memory of them either. You know, you know they were there for such a short time. But uh, yeah, that was that was probably one of the most interesting things we found there. You know, absolutely. And the, the, the fact that they were registered back then, you know, I suppose, is, as we were saying, it was kind of unheard of that they, you know, of children who died. And what I find most unusual about um, this as well, that any children that died, the next child was named after that child that died. And I thought that was, I suppose, odd in one sense, you know. Very, because oh, very common and very common. And what's significant about it is that it continues on to such a lick because it's a medieval practice and even early midi and even earlier than that and it, to, to have that practice continue on in a naming pattern to <laughs> right up to the 20th century where the dead child is named after the dead child so you, you you don't know the actual age of people because you're not sure which which person mm -hmm. you're talking about is, mm -hmm. is very significant and it's it's really really telling that that happens as well you know? And they're all quite big families and there's an awful lot of marriages, you know, um, you know, we were talking there when we were doing this about um, how quickly people got married again. Yes, that's right. The, the speed of remarriage was absolutely phenomenal. It was rarely longer than a year and a half of a break, break between, you know, and, and, and really the average was eight months of remarriage. That's what I would come across in research that for people researching that they need to assume that that is their relative who has remarried again and it right. usually is after eight months and the, the conditions supporting that are because very much they they had children they had need of of relate marriage was a contract of of needing something done you know it, it was a business relationship in some cases it was expected your status went up because of marriage it was it was that that way for men and women that a status of a married person was higher than that of a single person mm -hmm. so yeah. you know we see it in the census where we see married uh women having having status and single women maybe even down as members of their own family being classified as servants in the house yes so yeah that's that's something that we need to to be able to do but we ended up with a massive amount of people with the Marx relationship and, and we had wonderful Waterford with the names of the streets and the graveyard um and that's found, right so do you want to talk us through the graveyard a little bit about what you felt about that um we we um haven't been down there yet but we as you say we did find a headstone um um, on records Alfred yeah Mark. yes that would have been my grandfather's brother Alfred Marx and my mother had some kind of recollection of meeting him once or twice all right when she was very small but like they didn't keep in touch these families Do you know it's 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 odd really but I suppose they were all in Waterford which kind of made it I suppose you didn't have the transport or the communication that we have now so um, I suppose getting to Waterford wasn't an easy job like it is now, you know, to see relations and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we found Alfred, didn't we? In, yes. We and we did. found his wife and his daughter, actually. My mother had met his daughter a couple of times um, as well. I'm just looking at my book here now that we, we did just to see if I can locate the name of that. Um, graveyard again can you ottomans uh, i think ottomans i knew it was ottomans, a very ottomans it was a very unusual name and very all, unusual and just for anyone researching waterford city guys for our listeners the records are available on waterford county council for all the graveyards have been done beautifully in the fact that you can find the records for that particular graveyard and i believe i'd love to see it as well because i bet you it's a huge graveyard you know it yeah, seems well, to be very big it. 
Well, you see, I suppose with lockdown and everything and not being able to go into different counties at the time when we were doing all this, it, it was hard, you know, because yeah. we couldn't just get into the car and decide we'll drive down to Waterford and have a look around and see if we'll find any more, you know. Yeah, so I suppose absolutely. It's, it's only now we're kind of considering maybe getting together and making a trip out of this and going down to Waterford and walking around the graveyard and seeing if there's any other relations there you know now we were able to do it locally with the carols all right you know we were able to go around the graveyards and I suppose there was a little bit more information with Croom because um I would have lived there all my life you know until I was not, well up to 19 or 20 anyway you know but I'd be in contact and I still have family there so um it was a little bit easier to get information on the carols and Croom but as far as the marks was concerned, you know, you'd hear a name and then you now we tend to look them up on Facebook, <laughs> you know, and Absolutely. see are they on social media and try. But I did get contact. Um, Croom Past and Present is a Facebook page, which is very interesting. And we get a lot of local information goes up on that. And there was somebody, um, Steers, you'll remember, yes, um, yes. had was trying to research some of his family and as it turned out he was a first cousin of my mother's so I was able to make contact with him and I suppose this is the power of social media now as well that we're so lucky we have that you know um um that I found him true it was through Facebook group that we found him and we were able to contact him and get a little bit more background to my mom's side of the family the Carols I should say my grandmother's side of the family so um, that, that that was fun and interesting and chasing things up like that. But definitely we're, you know, we are um, trying to organise a trip to Otterance in Waterford and to all the streets. And hopefully, you know, in a couple of months, we'll be able to come back and have a bit more on that, you know. Um, my cousins in the UK are very eager to come and take that trip as well but right now I suppose we still have a little bit of restriction there with flights and stuff like that and with the the variants going around that we can't kind of organize a whole lot at the moment but hopefully you know within the coming months we should be able to by the new year I would definitely hope that by January we should be organizing a family trip down to Waterford with the research we have at the moment and kind of researching a bit more when we get there you know fantastic and just to take us to cr the croom park so we had the waterford connections with its alexander street peter street michael street named very personally after names naming systems so we need to do a bit of research into waterford city as to how that's changed now has that changed what what what's the landscape it seems to have held its great antiquity which is really, really brilliant. And we got the trades from the 1901 and 1911 census. We got mm -hmm. Griffith's valuation where we were able to look up all that information. We were able to see the movement of the marks into Waterford City at that time. We were able to look at their marriages and deaths, which were very informative on the irishgenealogy.ie site. All free resources, I might add, and that are really, really useful for any of you researching. Um, an urban centre. So we had two urban centres, Waterford and we had Croom as well, which was fairly sizable because of its barracks. It had a barracks. And I want you to tell us all about your Carol ancestry in Croom, please, because we had some colourful characters in that who oh were God, absolutely yeah. so innovative for their I time. Yeah, we were, I suppose we started out, we found a Cornelius Carol going back to 18. 32 um and he was, was married in 1832 1832 so he was um born in 1809 1810 so we were able to go, we yeah. were able to go back quite far with cornelius an unusual name to some not many cornelius carols around the place no. and yeah and we found his marriage and we found the births of all his children baptismal certs and bits and pieces the most of them and where they lived and they lived yes. in what lane in Croom? um she's lane it would have she's been known lane. as yeah 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 now that lane is still there obviously and we were we had we had actually old photographs of the house um because my mother would have been born in the house that actually cornelius had 
you know, which is amazing that it was still there all them years later. You know, my mother's 70 now, like, so it's not, you know, really, I suppose, when you go back to that time, Cornelius Carl's time, and the, the fact that it was still there in 52 is amazing, you know. Wonderful. And, um, and so we would have had old photographs of Shays Lane that we were able to find. And he died of cystitis in 80. And of course, the workhouse there in Croom played a massive part in all this. You know what I mean? And my family history, anyway, a lot of people would have died in the workhouse. A lot of my ancestors would have died in the workhouse. And I think at the moment, there's a lot of controversy going on about knocking that workhouse. And some people want it knocked and some people don't, you know, um, because of the history of it. And I suppose, yeah, we had Cornelius and he, he married uh, Margaret Meehan first. And she died. She was only 50 when she died. And that's what I find as well. A lot of, They were very young when they died, a lot of these people. But as you said, the poverty of the time. I suppose we're living to be so much older. That's really, yeah, like, it was, like 50 wasn't a bad age, to be honest, back then. You, really, your life yeah. expectancy could be in your 40s for a man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And definitely mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been, it, it was nothing to live to. The ages that people are living now would be unheard of. So most mm-hmm. people were, you know, dying of, 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 there was, there was no, um, I suppose cures for a lot of the disease. Yeah, well, you didn't we have, have the, the resources now. we have now, like, and the medicines we have now. But I suppose the most interesting thing was the Meehan name in my family, Meehan, M W H A N. That um, my mother had an uncle, and he was always known as Jim Meehan, and we never knew where that came from because he should have been Jim Carroll. His, his birth name was Jim Carroll. And we we never knew where the name Meehan came from. And I suppose when we, went, when we went into researching the Carrolls, that was the thing we wanted to find out the most about. Where did the name Meehan come from? And it, it turned out to be very interesting, didn't it, Lorna, as to where that came from. It came, um, it came as a part of an alias where Michael Meehan, father and son, from 1880 and the 1870s, 1880s, started using an alias. They had been caught poaching and they had been tried for poaching. And suddenly yeah. they lost the name of Carol and they adopted the name of Meehan. Well, the name and Meehan was actually Cornelius Carl's first wife's That's correct. name. So they took, name. they took their grandmother and mother's name, like Michael Meehan's mother was Margaret their maiden Meehan. Name. Yeah. And, but the son carried on the tradition. And on the 1901 census, they were known as Meehans, though they were buried as Carols, born as Carols, baptised as Carols, but known as Meehans. And so it was really wonderful to see how an alias worked, because an alias is normally a term that a woman would have on a headstone, too, of Margaret alias X, that the alias shows her name, her maiden name. Alias and mean ma- maiden. Would it be knee me and they, No, they no they, they we're not talking about no? the word knee at all. We're talking about right. alias, the word alias. And what we come across is the word alias in the Pesci Court sessions. And we have them them poaching on the River Meg and getting we did. her poaching on the River Meg and obviously making a fine living in salmon and stuff mm. and being able to keep their heads above water because poaching carried a ferocious fine and a ferocious penalty in 19th century. So we did a lot of research on that, on what yeah. that meant and the complexity of it. You, we did. We found a lot. We found out that obviously um, Michael Carl um, used the alias Meehan. He was Cornelius's son. Um, and he used his mother's maiden name when he got caught poaching as an alias. He didn't want to give the name Carl, so he gave them his mother's maiden name, which was Meehan. And that, I mean, that he married Anna Gleason and they had their children. But like you said, they used the name Meehan when it was convenient. You know, like you said, we had the census one name, we had yeah. certs another name, and we were like, gosh, where is all this going? You know, our. Why? But obviously we found a lot of petty court sessions after that. He was a quite a colourful character for the poach and, and the... And Absolutely. That, Absolutely. You know. And this is our wonderful part one of the show today. We have part two coming up now as well. So 
I'm I'm going to be pausing this this show for in a minute or two just to tell you, Janet, that was a wonderful interview of what we have with our part one of the Carol Marx brief. And ladies and gentlemen, listeners, the show is podcast out on a Sunday as well. And you can listen to it at four o'clock for Radio Cork Abashkin, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. And we're delighted to be working on many projects coming up. We're doing a, a surname uh, project and all sorts of things, exciting things coming up. And we've got competitions coming up in Radio Cork Bashkin because we need to do a fair bit of fundraising, for community fundraising and so on.